Welcome to the Voice of Vietnam and Seventy Young Hoos. On today's show, after the news, current affairs will highlight the significance of the 2016 PCA drawing in resolving its sea disputes and ensuring maritime order. And then, let us like acknowledge our listeners' emails and letters received during the week. First, here's the news. <laughs> In the headlines, the Bad Defense Committee Secretariat calls for top focus on fighting COVID-19. Cadet Chartered Bank predicts Vietnam's GDP grow 7.3% next year. And CO2 emissions will hit record level in 2023. Now for the news in detail. President Wilson Fook on Wednesday met representatives of the Association for Martyrs Family Support and Asian Orange Dogs and Victims. On the occasion of the 74 war in Berlitz and Modern's Day on July 27th and the 60th anniversary of Asian Orange Dogs and Disaster in Vietnam, the president praised the association for its practical activities to pay tribute to war martyrs and invalid as reflected in the party and state policies of paying gratitude to those who sacrificed for national independence and freedom. He asked ministries and provinces to continue supporting the association in their practical contribution to support the revolutionary veterans or martyrs' families in the veterans. National Study of the Team of Wednesday discussed amendments to the law and draft law making program for this year and next year. Deputy Do Van Dam from Dong Dong Province said the Senate approval of the net law amendment is a prudent concern. The land law has captured voters' interest as required by the National Service Standing Committee to get it passed in three sessions. Land resources have not been fully mobilized for social economic development. Due to its sophistication, the land law should be reviewed and passed after going through three sections. The government proposed 11 areas of policies amended in the land law, including the state role as the owner representative, land classification, agriculture and forestry land management, as well as dispute resolution. Fighting COVID-19. Fighting COVID-19. The Party Centre Committee Secretariat has sent an official dispatch on strengthening COVID-19 prevention control measures. The official dispatch says that the Party Committee's administration at all levels, mass organisations and people from walks of life has sought to overcome difficulties and promptly adopted measures to fight the pandemic. The fourth wave for infections with the largest scale and farthest ever spreading speed, the people's lives and health as well as production and business activities has been badly affected. To improve the efficiency of the fight against the pandemic, the permanent member of the Secretariat called on the entire political system to give the top focus on the work. This includes public consensus and the efficient implementation of social welfare support for people and businesses, basic necessity supply to people, and medical equipment for treatment for pandemic control. The Mass Mobilization Commission, the Surveillance Fund, social political organizations should have practical solutions to take care of the people, especially the disadvantaged and vulnerable groups. The United States Agency for International Development of Wednesday said it has provided $4.7 million to help Vietnam prepare a COVID-19 testing system, technical experts to coordinate, infection prevention and health facilities, medical screening at what it gets and others. 
USAID also provided $5 million to help mitigate the impact of the pandemic on the Vietnamese economy. The U.S. has provided more than $17 million to Vietnam's COVID-19 response, including 100 U.S.-made ventilators via the USAID. And next on VOV is the morning. Standard Chartered Bank forecast that Vietnam's GDP growth will accelerate to 6.7% in 2021 and 7.3% in 2022. The bank said figures in the domestic market, such as retail, will be the most affected if the COVID-19 pandemic continues. Team Defarfan, economist for Thailand and Vietnam, said. Vietnam is on its path to becoming the center of the regional supply chain and a modern industrial economy and a high-income country. The COVID-19 pandemic was well contained last year, which made Vietnam an attractive destination for foreign investors. Team said Vietnam has benefited from the relocation of the supply chain in recent years. Its ability to contain the COVID-19 pandemic will be a key for Vietnam's short-term economic prospect. Vietnam's aquatic product export to the EU in the first six months of this year reached nearly 419 million US dollars, a year-on-year increase of 20%. According to the Vietnam Association of Seafood Exporters and Producers, the export of natural aqua products increased 24% to about 150 million US dollars. World raised aqua products went up 18%, reaching about 330 million US dollars. The EU is Vietnam's fourth biggest aquatic export market, followed by the US, Japan, and China. The Netherlands, Germany, Belgium, and Italy are major importers of Vietnam's stream and tuna. Lu Hoàng Thái, director of the Department of Multilateral Trade Policy, said that aquatic export has taken advantage of the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement over the past year. The aquatic sector has high added value and helps Vietnam change its export structure. In the first part of the year, it has taken advantage of 70% of the EVFTA for Vietnam's total export value to the EU, a higher rate compared with other agreements. Sela Province held a ceremony on Wednesday announcing a trademark registration certificate for Sela Longin, an export of a batch to the EU and the UK markets. Vice Chairman of Soma District People's Committee, Nguyen Van Phuong, said, the export of long guns to the EU and Britain will promote our retorts for production. Market Vietnam will retort the products to the international market, generate jobs and increase income for long gun growers in Song Ma District and San La Province. San La Province expects to harvest 98,500 tons of long gun this year of which nearly 22,000 tons are eligible for export, mainly to China, Australia, the U.S. and Europe. So Madisak is currently the largest long-term granary in Sula province. A mere 2% of pandemic recovery spending is all going towards clean energy measures, and energy-related carbon emissions are likely to climb to record levels in 2022 as nuclear pitch inside the International Energy Agency said. Governments have allocated 380 billion US dollars out of 16 trillion US dollars in pandemic support to clean energy. The IEA calculated with this latest report monitoring pandemic recovery plans worldwide. Adding that under current spending plans, the planet's carbon dioxide emissions are on course to hit record levels in 2023 and continue to grow in the ensuing years. The last parts of China's central Henan province were underwater on Wednesday, with at least a dozen people dead in its capital, Shenzhou, after the city was stranded by what weather watchers said was the heaviest rain in 1,000 years. With no rain forecast across Henan for the next three days, the government of Chenzhou 
a city of over 12 million on the banks of the Yellow River, said 12 people were reported to have died in a flooded subway line, while more than 500 were pulled to safety. The lives of millions of people in Henan, a province with a population of around 100 million, have been repaired in an unusually active rainy season that has led to the rapid rise of the number of rivers in the vast Yellow River Basin. In the news, the main point once again. The party Central Committee Secretariat calls for thought focus on fighting COVID-19. The Chartered Bank predicts Vietnam's GDP grows 7.3% in 2022, and CO2 emission will hit record level in 2023. That's the news. <laughs> Now listen, I'm going here's the time of the fence. On July the 12th, 2016, the Permanent Court of Arbitration, the Arbitral Tribunal constituted under Annex 7 of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea in The Hague, issued a landmark ruling on the Philippines' lawsuit against China regarding the South China Sea, known as the East Sea in Vietnam. Five years later, the situation in East Sea remains unresolved. But it is undeniable that, together with the 1982 unclause, the PCS ruling is an important legal foundation for resolving the East Sea dispute peacefully and sharing maritime order. The PCS ruling said China's declared nine death line provides no legal basis for China's claim of an historic right to resources in the East Sea. The ruling means China has neither the right to claim an inclusive economic zone nor the historic right to claim sovereignty in order to supply the resources in the area. The court ruling drew a great deal of attention from countries involved in sovereignty disputes in the East Sea, as well as many countries outside the region. Your leaders delivered statements and scholars wrote mountains of commentary, treating the ruling as the legal foundation for minimizing and resolving disputes in the East Sea. The international community said the PCA ruling upheld international law in the East Sea disputes underscored the duties of involved parties within the framework of the 1982 and class and condemned unilateral actions that violate international law and cause instability. In the years since the ruling, the situation in the East Sea has not developed in line with the ruling in any way, but it has at least served as a catalyst for stronger reaction against China's activities in the East Sea. The East Sea disputes and compliance with the 1982 and clause have been subject to discussion at many international forums and conferences. 2020 saw a war of public notes with many countries, directly or indirectly mentioning the PCA's ruling in 2016 in favor of the Philippines and challenging China's claims. It's clear that the East Sea has become not just a regional issue, but a shared concern of countries around the world. In June 2021, 100 UN members joined the group of friends of the 1982 and class. Many more countries have embraced freedom of navigation operations in the East Sea to demonstrate their opposition to illegal sovereignty claims. These are direct effects of the PCA ruling five years ago. The East Sea has strategic geopolitical importance, not just for coastal states, but for all of Southeast Asia and the world. The East Sea connects the Pacific and Indian Ocean, Europe and Asia, and the Middle East and Asia, giving it a crucial role in global maritime trade. Maintaining peace, stability, and safety in the East Sea is something that concerns all countries. Disputes in the East Sea must be resolved peacefully based on international law, without unilateral intentions. The ruling of the PCA must be honored. The East Sea is a test for countries to prove their commitment to maintaining peace, stability, and the law based international border. Welcome to the Letter Box, our weekly feature that gives the listeners around the world. We have been inventing your faithful hope.
Many of our listeners told us that they are thirst for traveling as a consequence of the prolonged COVID-19 pandemic. Me too, I have always reminisced about the trips I have taken in the past five months hmm, since the first outbreak of the pandemic in Vietnam in April. Tourism in Vietnam has almost frozen again after a short recovery. Right. City breaks prevail as the most favorite time of religious trips. Don't be so pessimistic. This is the time for many to reflect on how their future travels can be. This summer and actually I'm thinking about my winter holiday where the pandemic will be contained at the end of the year. Well, people worldwide are also planning their future travels. Despite the resurgence of the pandemic in Europe, 54% of respondents in a survey indicated that they will take a trip in the next six months, with the majority, 78%, planning to travel within Europe. According to Forbes, the picture across the EU and the UK in July is optimistic but becoming a little more complicated than in June. More and more countries are open, but the threat of the Delta variant looms. In ASEAN, a survey conducted by the ASEAN Japan Center shows that more than 63% of respondents want to go to Vietnam for sightseeing, and over 70% of those who had visited Vietnam want to come back. Yeah, the online survey conducted early this year by the ASEAN Japan Center in coordination with the Marketing Voice Company looked into travel sentiment on ASEAN member states among Japanese in their 20s to 60s with 10,000 participants. According to the survey, Japanese visitors are more satisfied with cuisine, scenery and atmosphere and places of interest at historical sites when visiting Vietnam. Regarding the deciding factor in choosing Vietnam as a destination, 28.3% of respondents answered recommended by family, friends, acquaintances. And the trip was low cost, followed by online blogs and review sites. As for the impression of Vietnam, the highest percentage of respondents answered delicious food, followed by rich in history and culture. If you are planning your future travel, let's take into consideration a visit to Vietnam. Well, next we continue to read emails and research reports from other listeners. Jayanta Chakrabadi of India emailed us his feedback on the program on July 14th, listened via live streaming with good reception results. The news that interested him was a virtual discussion between Vietnam's National Assembly Chairman and its Singaporean counterpart on measures to further strengthen bilateral strategic partnership. Other news was Vietnamese President Winston Phuc talked with the Romanian President on promoting bilateral cooperation in trade, education and labor. Romania granted Vietnam 100,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccine to help fight the pandemic. He also held Vietnam's administration with more than 4 million COVID-19 vaccine doses. Some 283,000 people have already received double doses. The health ministry has prioritized distribution of vaccines to the most affected areas, including densely populated cities and those at international border gates. People at risk, like workers in essential services, traders, businessmen, and foreign experts have been taken care of. Chakarabachi asked us about games that Vietnamese athletes participating in at the Tokyo Olympics. Well, the Vietnamese sports delegation includes 43 members, including 18 athletes, to compete in 11 sport events. Weightlifting, boxing, gymnastics, swimming, badminton, archery, shooting, athletics, technical, judo, and rowing, among the total 11 sports. With this thing has been identified as the one with the brightest medal outlook for Vietnam. Vietnam's medal hopes are also pinned on Taekwondo with the presence of fighter Chung Thi Kim Duyen. She is the only athlete from the Vietnamese Olympic contingent to have undergone overseas training before heading to Japan. Shibiro Huang Sun will compete in the Tokyo 2020 as the reigning champion in the men's 10 meter air pistol event. The title holder, 47, booked his Olympic place after the International Olympic Committee offered an invitation or ticket for Vietnam in the category, asking the Vietnam Student Federation to send an outstanding or well-known masked man to the Games. Five years ago, Vietnam enjoyed its most successful Olympic journey ever, ranking 45th in the overall Rio Games medal table with one gold and one silver, both won by Shooter Hoffman.
Vietnamese Olympic athletes at the Tokyo 2020 Games will receive over $80,000 in bonuses for each gold medal. Bonuses of $43,000 and $28,000 will be awarded for each silver and bronze medal. The bonus money for Vietnamese Olympic medalists is expected to increase significantly with contributions from many other sources such as the sports sector, athletic management units, businesses, organizations, and individuals. For the first time in Olympic history, national flags will be carried by two athletes at the Games, and runner Kwasi Lan and swimmer Nguyen Huy Wang have the honor of carrying the Vietnamese flag at the upcoming Tokyo Games opening ceremony. The new rule, with every nation to be led by their female and male athletes, is part of International Olympic Committee's efforts to push gender equality. Swimmer Nguyen Huy Wang has qualified for both Games 800 meter and 1,500 meter freestyle event. He was the first Vietnamese athlete to book an Olympic slot after he passed the A standard for the 800 meter class at the World Championship in July 2019 in South Korea. He set a new record at the 30th South Asian Games, 1,500 meters, and took a second Olympic slot. But the Lan will be the only Vietnamese runner in Tokyo after receiving a wild card. The Asian Championship and Asian Games winner will compete at the women's 400 meter hurdles. For the first time in history of the International Olympics, the winners will put their medals around their own necks to avoid contact and COVID-19 infection. Medals will be put on the tray and the athletes will take the medals by themselves. There will be no handshakes and hugs during the medal ceremony. Previously, the medals were presented by an IOC member or a leading official in a sports governing body. This year's Olympic Games will be held under unprecedented and adverse conditions due to the numerous obstacles created by COVID-19. We wish them safe games and every success to the Vietnamese athletes. And here we have an email from Ms. Samina Dahl of Pakistan. She told us that the All Liar Listeners Club exhibition will be held on August the 14th. All the acting clubs will celebrate this event together. Congratulations for the very interesting listeners club exhibition of Laya District. We hope you will share with us and other listeners photos and stories of the event and your dancing club. We first say goodbye. Let's enjoy an upbeat tune by Talking and this is called Tomorrow. Thank you all for tuning in to VOB's English broadcast and leaving your comments on our Facebook fan page, VOB5 English Service. We always welcome your feedback at English Service, VOB World, The Voice of Vietnam, number 45 back here at Street Hanoi, Vietnam, or you can email us at English section at VOB.vn. You are invited to visit us online at VOBworld.vn. We're going to hear both live and record programs. Thank you all. Goodbye. Until the next time.